Before I start this video I want to thank you for watching. Please don't forget to share it with your friends. And with that being said... In this tutorial video I'm gonna explain the basic combat system of the game. Let's have a look at the basic combat values. Each unit has a general combat strength. They also have defense values against specific unit types. The unit types are infantry, cavalry and archers. Another important value in the unit screen are provisions, which I will explain later. Let's have a look at our first battle. Here we have 100 axe fighters attacking 100 spearmen. In order to see who will win this battle, we will have to look at the values explained earlier. For attacking units, we check the combat strength value. Axe fighters have a combat strength of 45. We have 100 axe fighters, that's why we multiply this by 100. We now have a total combat strength of 4500. For the defender, we look at the defense value against infantry, because axe fighters are an infantry unit. Spearmen have a defensive value against infantry of 25. We also multiply this by 100 and get 2500. So we now have a total combat strength of 4500, fighting a defense value of 2500. We can clearly see that the attacker wins this battle. The more powerful the attacking units are in comparison to defending units, the fewer casualties are to be expected on the attacking side. In this case we have 41 casualties for the attacker. In our second battle, the attacker sends 100 axe fighters once again. This time the defender is prepared and has 50 spearmen and 100 swordsmen. The combat strength of the attacker is the same as in our previous battle, 4500. The defender has 50 spearmen with a defense value against infantry of 25 each, which is a total of 1250. As we can see, the swordsmen have a better defense value against infantry. Their value is 55. We also multiply this by 100 and get a total of 5500. In this battle, we have a combat strength of 4,500 against a defense value of 6,750. This time the defender wins. Casualties are distributed equally on all defending unit types. The defender loses 27 spearmen and 54 swordsmen. In our third example, the attacker sends two different unit types, which adds complexity to the combat system. There are three different combat groups in the game, infantry, cavalry and archers. Attacking units always determine combat groups. In our example, there are two combat groups, infantry and cavalry. In order to check the manpower of each group, we have to check the provisions on the unit screen. An axe fighter consumes one provision, whereas light cavalry consume four. This means 20% of consumed provisions go into the infantry group, whereas 80% of the provisions go into the cavalry group. Defending units are divided equally into the two combat groups. 20% of all defending units fight in the infantry group, and 80% fight in the cavalry group. Combat groups fight one after another. First infantry, second cavalry, third archers. Defending units fight with a defense value against the unit type depending on the combat group they are fighting in. Attacking units only have one combat value and always use that. Surviving units in a group will move over and support the next group in line. So let's have a look at our example. In the infantry group, the attacker has 100 axe fighters. They have a combat strength of 45 times 100, making a total of 4500. The defender has 20 spearmen, 20 swordsmen and 20 archers in the infantry group. We now look at the defense values against infantry. For the spearmen we have 25 times 20 equals 500. For the swordsmen we have 55 times 20 equals 1100. For the archers we only have 10 times 20 equals 200. Here we can see that the archers are the weakest unit type in this group. We now have a total combat strength of 4500, fighting a total defense value of 1800. The attacker wins the infantry group. 75 axe fighters survive and move over to the next group. Let's have a look at the cavalry group. The attacker has 100 light cavalry. Light cavalry has a combat strength of 130. The attacker has 100 of them in this group, making a total of 13,000 combat strength. On top of that, there's 75 axe fighters from the first group, adding 3,375 to the combat strength, making it a total of 16,375. In this group, the defender has 80 spearmen, 80 swordsmen and 80 archers. We are now looking at the defense value against cavalry. Spearmen have a defense value against cavalry of 45. We can see that this is way higher than the defense value against infantry. We multiply this by 80 and get 3600 for the spearmen. Swordsmen have a defense value against cavalry of 5. This is 50 less than against infantry. So this unit is very weak in the second group. We multiply this defense value by 80 and only get 400. In this group, the archers contribute a bit more. They have a defense value against cavalry of 30. We multiply this by 80 and get 2400. So we now have a total combat strength of 16375 fighting against a defense value of 6400. 
The attacker also wins the second group. This is the last group in line, which is why the attacker wins the entire battle. In this example, we can see that the archers weaken the infantry group and the swordsmen weaken the cavalry group. The attacker wins with a landslide, even though he sent 200 units against 300, and he only loses 60 of his units. Our fourth battle is very complex. The attacker sends 10,000 axe fighters, 2,000 light cavalry, 500 mounted archers, and a paladin equipped with Nimrod's composite bow level 3. The attacker sends his troops out of province, which is why they will fight with only 50% of their combat strength. If the attacker had a chapel or a church level 1 in this province, his troops would fight with 100% instead. The attacker also has 10% luck. The defender, on the other hand, has 2,000 spearmen, 2,000 swordsmen, 1,000 archers, and 500 heavy cavalry. The defender has a chapel in his village, which makes his troop fight with 100% of their defense values. In this village, there's also a wall level 20. This building adds a base defense value of 1420 and adds another 100% to the defense values. If we now look at the provisions distributed in each combat group, we see that the infantry group has 48.8%, the cavalry group has 39% and the archer group has 12.2%. The infantry group attacks first. The attacker sends 10,000 axe fighters. This is a total of 450k. The paladin always joins the strongest group. With almost 50% of all provisions in this battle, the infantry group is the strongest, which is why the paladin supports this group. The paladin has a combat strength of 150. Well, there's only one, so we add 150 to the total amount. The defender now has 976 spearmen, 976 swordsmen, 488 archers, 244 heavy cavalry, and also a wall level 20. The wall is added to all groups. If we look at the defensive values against infantry, we see the heavy cavalry as by far the strongest value. This is a very strong defensive unit. In total, the defender now has a defensive value against infantry of more than 133k. Let's apply the modifiers. The attacker only fights with 50% of combat strength, because he's fighting out of province. But he has 10% luck, so we add that. The total combat strength is now around 250k. The defender, on the other hand, fights with 100% and gains another 100% of the wall. So we double the defensive value, which is slightly more than the attacker. As we can see, before we applied the modifiers, the attacker would have crushed the defender, but fighting out of province and a wall level 20 can really turn the tides. The defender wins the infantry group, the paladin definitely had the wrong weapon equipped, because Nimrod's composite bow level 3 would boost the mounted archers, and not the axe fighters. The survivors on the defending side move over to the next group. We now look at the cavalry group. The attacker has 2000 light cavalry. This is a total combat strength of 260k. The defender has 780 spearmen, 780 swordsmen, 390 archers, 195 heavy cavalry, and again the wall level 20. We now also add the survivors. We now have a total defensive value against cavalry of around 93k. Without adding the battle modifiers, we can clearly see that the attacker again would have crushed the defender in this group. Let's add the modifiers. So we first have the combat strength because the attacker is fighting out of province. Then we add 10% luck, making it a total of 143k. The defensive value is doubled because of the chapel and the wall, now making it a total of around 186k. The defender wins the cavalry group. And again, this is a good example that attacking out of province is not a good idea if you don't have a church or chapel in this province. The surviving defense units move over to the next group. Let's have a look at our last group. The attacker has 500 mounted archers. This is a total combat strength of 75,000. The defender has 244 spearmen, 244 swordsmen, 122 archers, 61 heavy cavalry, and again, the wall level 20. And of course, we are also adding the surviving units. This is a total defense value against archers of around 36,000. If the attacker wouldn't have attacked out of province, he would have dominated this group as well. But let's apply the modifiers. The combat strength is halved again. Adding 10% luck makes it a total combat strength of around 41k. The defensive value gets doubled to nearly 73,000. And again, the defender wins, winning the entire battle, because the attacker attacked out of province and the high level wall greatly improved defenses. This is a very good example on how 12,500 units failed to defeat less than half of the amount of units. I hope this video helped you. If you liked it, please hit that like button. You can subscribe for more content and check out my other videos. Now get back to the game and crush your enemies. Thank you for watching.